all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. I guess this is a busy day. It is still the 14th of June in the year of our Lord, 2022. I guess I've been on a break from uh, uh, doing videos, and now it's built up, and I've got uh, a lot to do. And sometimes you need a little rest, a little change of subject. And anyway... Uh, I was listening to a, several gentlemen talk about the situation in Europe, in America, and as um, inflation, the economies, um, as a result, in part, from the uh, sanctions on Russia, uh, which was one of the dumbest things anybody in the world ever did. It's like cutting off your own nose because you're angry at somebody else. I'll just be really ugly. Uh, yeah, uh, to spite your face, you know, that's uh, self-destructive. Talk about self-destructive. The, the, uh, the, what used to be called Christendom has committed Harry Curry disemboweled themselves. Well, that's what happens when you elect uh, godless, wicked people that practice abortion as a sacrament. People that use the government to try to force nations around this world to legalize everything God hates, including abortion, homosexuality, everything else. See, other countries aren't allowed to try to be godly. That's one of the reasons Russia and Putin is hated so much, because although they have not outlawed abortion and homosexuality, homosexual acts, they discourage it and, for example, pass laws to prohibit the uh, uh, propaganda in favor of these things. Yeah, that's such a terrible thing, isn't it? In the, while the United States, we have entertainment, family-oriented movie industries like Disney, who are now all on board promoting the the perversions, the sexual perversion of children. Was this even done in Sodom? Not satisfied with satisfying their own lusts among themselves. They have to recruit others. They have to recruit children. Of course, they can't reproduce after their kind because God did not create people except as male and female and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And other sexual acts cannot be fruitful. Not that that's the only purpose of sex and marriage. But that's the only place sex belongs, is in the marriage between one man and one woman, preferably for life. That's the original intent. Okay. Uh, and it wasn't a chore. <laughs> sex is not a chore. <laughs> Until people like Augustine came along. They're, see, they're theologians. And these people that don't ground their understanding in the Scriptures. Augustine was never grounded in the Scripture. No, Augustine was grounded in Augustine and pagan philosophy to a degree. Not simply that, but... And he did not understand. You don't mix... You don't mix together things that aren't designed to be mixed together. You don't mix, in the Scripture, you don't 
mix garments of wool and flax. You don't sow your seeds with uh, fields with mixed seeds. You don't yoke together an oxen and an ass. What is this about? Well, that God is illustrating that you don't mix the holy and the profane. You don't mix what's right with what is wrong. What I was, as I was listening to some gentlemen talk, a trio of gentlemen that I often listen to, in fact, that they were going on and on about inflation and everything else, and I think they don't understand. And I have to say that I take a course in introductory to economics, and they don't understand. The interesting thing is, uh, when you suppress the knowledge of God, one of the punishments, one of the things that naturally occurs from that is your brain doesn't work right. You cannot think properly because it's not grounded in the reality that is. And the reality that is is the creation of God. And the creation of God is grounded in God himself. So if, if you don't understand God, if you don't know God, if you don't believe what God has said, you cannot believe reality. The, the, it goes together. So it's like I've said, and I re will repeat again, you cannot educate people and produce any good results unless they are, are the foundation of education is the knowledge of God. Because you have to have God, who is the source of all that exists and the, all, the origin of everything, and the, the one who gives everything purpose. You cannot have education without that. It only produces evil. But anyway, they were talking about inflation, and I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think I had this problem with my uh, my uh, economics professor, too. See, these people that are, they, they treat these things as an abstraction. I wonder if these economists ever had a job in their life. But again, it's not so much that. It's not just practical experience, which is one of the problems that uh, Trump had bringing to Washington. He had actual experience in business, even though it was a rather weird business, is the kind of things he was in. Not, not exactly what I would consider productive enterprises. Uh, the economists, they, they treat all price increases as inflation. They tend to. I'm sure there's some that, that figured that's not quite correct. But that's not true. Just because prices rise doesn't mean that's inflation. See, it's, it's conflating two different problems. You have, and economists know that, but because they treat things in abstraction and not as a system. See, when that's one thing. If you've worked as an engineer, you tend to work in systems, and you understand principles like feedback and you know, and how the thing all has to work together. Now, just because you're an engineer doesn't mean you understand things, but uh, as a Christian, and when I look at God's creation, I see all this stuff that people have invented that God invented first. The systems in, in biology and human autonomy, and uh, not autonomy, uh, uh, anatomy, the, the, the biology of the human being, the biology of algae, the biology of all things, and the the, uh, God creates it all with purpose, and it all has to work together. You know, we talk about ecology. It's a system. But unless you understand it was created, then you can't understand it. So the greens can't do anything but destroy because they're not grounded in the reality of God. You have to have a moral foundation. You have to have moral understanding. Otherwise, you can't talk about purpose. You, you cannot guide anything. But uh, economy and inflation, price increases due to supply and demand are not inflation. Inflation is when you inflate the amount of currency and the prices rise because there's an excess of currency. See, currency is a commodity, too. It's a useful commodity. But if you need the amount of currency that's necessary to re, uh, maintain economic uh, activity. Otherwise, if you have too little currency, prices will have to fall because you have enough currency to sustain things. And if you have too much, 
prices will go up because there's excess currency. That's inflation or deflation. Inflation infer refers to the inflation of the currency, not the inflation, the uh, the rise of prices. Although it will cause, it will, there will be a rise of prices. Supply and demand is when the demand for something exceeds the available supply, the price will rise to what the market will bear. It's, it's a form of rationing by price. Not necessarily just, but that's how it works. But you can't conflate those two. The central banks tend to conflate it all and say, well, the prices are going up. Say gas has gone up 50%. Groceries have gone up roughly 50%, from my experience, and many, much of it, the important stuff. And uh, you can't, if you try to force prices down by raising interest rates, what you'll have to do is basically force the economy down into a recession. That is not how you deal with inflation. You, you have to, to remove the excess currency. See, the United States has been essentially since 9-11 in order to prevent a, a, a bad recession, of course, they didn't succeed at it, basically loaning money out at 0% interest. At least the banks can borrow from the Fed at close to zero. That's really a desperation. That means the economy's been running on free money. See, when the banks can borrow money at 0% and, say, lend it at 3%, that's profit for them. They borrow money from the Fed. Where does the Fed get the money? It creates it out of nothing. It's fiat currency. They just put it on the books. Or they buy, they use, they create money to buy uh, federal bonds. Create money out of federal debt. <laughs> and make money on that. Wow, what a scam that is for the banks who own the Fed. See, the banks are, the Fed is owned by the banks. Yeah. <laughs> it's sort of a co op for the banks. Uh, it's strange. Now, the Federal Reserve should provide a stable currency that's adequate for the economy. That but that's not what they do. They try to manipulate the economy, and they do not understand what they're doing. They do not understand. They can throw the whole economy into a recession to cure something. Again, like right now, the price of gasoline is over $5 a gallon here. And it's not because of inflation, particularly. It's because of supply and demand. Biden destroyed the gasoline supplies. <laughs> Not totally, but damaged it. So they're less available, so they become more expensive. That's the way it is. If the demand for something is high and the supply is low, you charge more for it. It's scarcity causing it. Uh, so when you got disruptions in the supply chain, when you can't get things, when you can't get vehicles, for example, because of, of chip shortages, because they've messed up uh, the world, they're going to do it worse if they keep going the direction they're going. If, if you think this is bad now, just wait until they get a war started with China, and then there are nothing, there's nothing to buy. And so many, so many parts of so many things are made in China, or at least one component. It only takes one component in many modern things, like a chip, that you can't get to prevent being able to sell that. Uh, I don't know what the current status is, but there were, there were thousands and thousands of Ford pickup trucks parked out in fields because they were missing a component. One component. See, the American system is so fragile. And now the idiots have connected everything to the Internet. Dumb! Dumb, 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 dumb. Technology is not the solution. Sometimes simplicity is the solution. 
I can remember one time when I was working as an engineer at the company, and the, the guy that oh, that I sort of worked for was he liked technology, he liked computers. That's why he hired me. And I was he wanted had a solution he needed for something, and he wanted, well, can you make a computer control system to do this and this and this? And I said, yeah, we can do that. And I was I was thinking about this. It was a paper rolling machine and uh, tensioner or something like that on it. And I was uh, thinking about that, and I was thinking, well, I can do, use a servo control and this and this and this, and uh, encoders and everything else, because I'd done things like that. But then it suddenly occurred to me, I don't knew that need that. All I need is a ramp, like a it's like a cam, I'll use a linear ramp, and a roller that goes up and follows this ramp, <laughs> and you can adjust the ramp. It's like, wow, I am so stupid. You know, they used to do all kinds of things mechanically, simply, that worked just fine. You don't have to apply a computer to everything to, to make it work. <laughs> In fact, you're better off not. Like a, the diesel engines, the old diesels that, that didn't have computer controls. They didn't need them. Now, but uh, uh, inflation, the, the central bank, again, inflation caused by inflating currency, excess currency, the Fed creating money by loaning out money that doesn't exist, by uh, quantitative easing. That's just newspeak. That's Orwellian language for printed money. Out of nothing, turn to print. They don't actually print it. They don't need to because most money doesn't exist as paper anymore. It just exists as computer entries. We just say it exists and it exists. Just put, just enter a number into the, the ledger and it's there. Back it up by borrowing, by purchasing some federal debt. Back your currency with debt. So rather than backing it with an asset, it's backed with debt. Bad idea. <laughs> oh, the federal government will never renege on its debt. Really? My dad said General Motors would never go bankrupt. Couldn't possibly go bankrupt. I said, yes, it could. Who was right? <laughs> Houses can never go down in value. Real estate will never go down in value, I heard from them. Yeah. And then call on came 20, 2008. People were buying houses for simply speculating on real estate and flipping houses. And all of a sudden, they found themselves over their head because they'd bought houses and nobody wants to buy them. And people go bankrupt. And sometimes loans and banks bankrupt people who should never have gone bankrupt. There was a period of time when many farmers were being encouraged by their bankers to borrow money and build new barns and buy new machinery that they didn't really need, that they wouldn't actually buy out of necessity or, or out of uh, uh, planning for their needs and expansion or whatever, but rather were simply being encouraged to buy and expand and do more and doing more and because the bankers wanted to make money. And then at one point, suddenly they had bought land or whatever, and the bank suddenly decided to foreclose on the mortgage, even though they were paying the interest. They were making the payments, but the bank simply decided that the land, the property was not worth what the loan was worth anymore. Therefore, the mortgage was not uh, secured by real assets because the value of the assets had dropped. So they demanded their payment in full, and when the farmers couldn't pay it, they took the land. They encouraged them to go into debt, and then they foreclosed on mortgages that were being paid, and they seized the property. And, banker, and the farmers thought they just got cheated, and they were cheated. Would a Christian do that? Of course not. Of course not. Not and call yourself a Christian. 
But this is uh, so. But I just wanted to clarify what inflation is caused by by excess currency, and uh, prices can be caused by uh, lack of supply. So there's a difference, and you can't handle them the same way. If you try to to treat increased prices that are due to supply and demand by raising interest rates, you will simply crush the economy. But then the economists know better. Who am I? Just a country preacher. That happens to know God. Don't expect anything to come out of universities that don't have a foundation in the knowledge of God. Anything good. It does explain why things are such a mess, doesn't it? When people forget God, they destroy themselves. When nations forget God, they destroy themselves. Now, I also want to mention the problem, one of the problems with democracy and capitalism. See, there's no foundation. There's no, there is n in the system of democracy, it is inherently self-destructive. As people, I think, like Rousseau and others, noticed when it was created back in, like, 1776. Because, in fact, I can't remember, was it was so or somebody else that observed that once the people realize they can vote largesse, they can vote benefits for themselves from the Treasury, that'll be the end of America. Yeah. So we got people like Biden now. I'm like, oh, I'll give you this, I'll give you that, guaranteed income, whatever. Pay your debts, pay your educational debts. What will that do? Maybe I'll go back to school. Why not? <laughs> Go argue with professors. <laughs> free, free, free. See, there's, there's, no, there's no guidance there. Uh, uh, capitalism allocates resources based on potential profit. That's not a good system. It's better than just throwing money out there for nothing. But there, there is no, this is one area where uh, socialism or communism, or preferably old-fashioned kings. See, there, here you, with kings, you have a person that's personally responsible and actually benefits or suffers as his kingdom benefits or suffers and has a longer-term perspective, like a lifetime perspective on things, hopefully. If you have a good king, that is far better than any democracy. Because democracy, you have the rule of majority. And in a sinful race, the majority is always going to be sinful. There's no place that's populated by a majority of saints. Not even New England and the, the Puritans could hold their thing together for more than a generation. They quickly degenerated, and then they became apostates. Unitarian Universalism. Uh, New England pay, uh, Protestantism, uh, Calvinism, quickly beta became Universalism uh, and Unitarianism, which is utter apostasy. That's not Christianity. It's more like deism. In fact, it is deism. <laughs> really? But the idea of a, a, a king, you have a person that is supposedly dedicated. It's not that nobility itself is superior. There's no inherent nobility. But a person that is a, a, a king is God's second choice to direct rule by God through his prophets. But that's not available today. The pro people that call themselves prophets are the last people you want to follow. We need the king to come back. See, we're awaiting the king. See, the economy needs moral guidance. It needs direction. Capitalism, profit is not a direction. You can make lots of profit in immoral, wicked activities, like drugs, sex, alcohol, destructive entertainment, uh, military video games, things like that. Just morally destructive things make lots of money, and people want them. 
the movies in Hollywood, they've, they've become utterly debased and wicked, and they promote gun violence. They say people that are hollering about gun control are the ones that are causing a lot of the problem. See, if, if you put out these things constantly, provide this propaganda, this violent propaganda, and then you complain about the, the fruit of your, your violent industry, uh, but nobody holds into account. Oh, it's free speech. Yeah, tell me about it. But there, there, ha there has to be a moral direction that establishes priorities for economies, priorities for life, priorities for education, priorities. Why do we do these things? It can't just be free-floating uh, whatever the majority wants because the majority is sinful, always in this age. It's an inherent flaw in democracy. Now, if you can have a population of saints, then democracy would probably be okay, but unnecessary because saints really don't need government because they're internally government by, governed by Christ. They just ask God, what do you want me to do? Oh, okay, I'll do that. We have a country. See, capitalism, which is considered a great good thing. No, it's not. The production of a profit does not mean you're producing anything good. Money is not a good. It's a medium of exchange. That's all. The desire to have lots of money is not a good thing. It's a vice. To be content with enough is a good thing. Contentment with sufficiency is good. Contentment with God is good. But the desire for riches is a vice. It's immoral. It's idolatry. So uh, democracy a majority will always establish the wrong goals because the majority are sinful and do not know God. Do not submit to themselves to the world, word of God. Do not look to the scripture to see out what, what God says is should be our priorities. corrupt. And government, the, the democratic government, is always going to lead further and further in corruption because as the majority establish their priorities, sinful priorities, that's a feedback loop which further corrupts the majority into further leg corrupt legislation. And you get this, this feedback loop that brings America to where it is today. It didn't start out this corrupt, but has arrived at the terminus, perhaps. Democracy is a bad system. Just like secular education is corrosive. It's corrosive of the very values that hold a nation together. It's corrosive of goodness. Because people have to be taught what's good. And good is defined by God alone, not by majority opinion, not by what not by the market, what makes money. Because sin always makes money in a fallen race. Just like when the Iron Tur Curtain disappeared and, and they began to bring uh, imports from the West into Eastern Europe, into Russia, the first thing that showed up on the street was not Bibles, but pornography. Things that were banned under communism. See, even the communists recognize that those things are evil and you don't want your people uh, enslaved to vices like that. 
even they tended to discourage abortion. They would award, in the Soviet Union, they used to award, now the Soviet Union was communist, it was atheist. It was, it was uh, had a cancer in the core that caused its destruction within 70 years. Because it was not, it did not build on a foundation that is right with God. But they would re award medals. They didn't award money to people. They awarded medals for this and that. To, uh, to women that had large families, you know, like six, seven kids, they would be a heroine, of the, a heroine of the Soviet Union. They rewarded, honored women that had many children because they recognized that children were the future. America is bent on death and destruction. America honors those things that are destructive of civilization today. Subsidizes them, protects them, suppresses criticism of them. America's toast. Western Europe is toast. The world has gone nuts. The only hope that I can see, rational hope, is the coming of Christ. Maranatha, come quickly, Lord Jesus, because we have, must have a king to set the foundations right and to direct people in the right direction. Because this world is twisted and on a it's, it's gone over the edge of the abyss. It's not just on a downward spiral anymore. It has become, the United States has become worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. Morally destitute. What comes out of that? Well, it's what you see in the streets. See in the streets of Chicago. See in the streets of New York. See, see, see in the, uh, what you see in the, the stock market and other places. See in Hollywood. Moral bankruptcy. Wickedness. The exaltation of wickedness. Do you know where that ends? God knows where that ends. And he must cut it short. Our humanity will destroy everything. The head of NATO the other day said every nation has a right to nuclear weapons. Madness. Madness. So, now we have Dr. Strangelove as the head of NATO. Hmm. Not a good thing. 